Now I will discuss the concepts of the cost of capital. The primary function of the company is to generate revenue and profit. It only has profit when the output is more than the input. The cost of the capital is telling us how expensive is the input. Therefore, it is very important to find out the cost of the capital of a company so that we can use the cost of the capital as the discount rate to evaluate the cash flow and also do the capital budgeting. Traditionally, there are three ways to raise the capital. One is to issue debt. And the second is to issue stocks. For stocks, there are two types. One is the preferred stock, and other is the common stock. Let's look at the debt first. When you issue the debt, besides owning liability, you also have to pay the interest to the debt holder. So intuitively, we will say that the interest rate is the cost of the debt. For example, if I issue $1,000 and the interest rate is 8%, then I will know that I have to pay $80 per year to the debt holder. So the cost of the debt is 8%. But in reality, since the company has to pay tax if they make profits, so the cost of the debt is not just equals to I, which is the interest rate. It's actually equals to I times 1 minus T, where T is tax rate. The reason is because when you pay more debt, you have more expenses. So the profit is less, and you have to pay less tax. Let's say the company has 40% tax bracket. So its real cost of debt is actually just 8% times 1 minus 0.4, which is equal to 4.8%. And in this case, they only have to pay $48. The reason is that if you didn't issue the debt, in, in the income statement, you have $80 less expenses, and thus you have to pay 40% of the $80, that is $32 more for, to the government. Taking this into account, although your real cash flow to the debt is $80, but actually you are only paying $48 extra due to the debt. So that's why the cost of the debt is I times 1 minus T. So then how about the preferred stock? Preferred stock is just similar to debt. You have to pay dividends every year at a fixed rate. For example, let's say 5%. So if you issue $1,000 of preferred stock, you have to pay $50 a year to the preferred stock holder. So the cost of the preferred stock is just equal to 5%. However, this time, we cannot take the test into account. This is because the dividends payout is below the line, which means that it is after the test paid. So we denote the cost of the preferred stock as KP. Now, then how about the common stock? For common stock, it's more complicated. It is more difficult to evaluate. So there are several methods to evaluate, including the capital asset pricing model, or the dividends discount model, or we can even relate it to the bond yield. For this three concepts, I will discuss in the next lecture. Anyway, the cost of the common stock, or we can call it common equity, can be represented as KC. So what is the total cost of capital? The total cost of capital is actually just a weighted average cost of capital. It means that the cost of individual components will contribute to the total cost of capital according to their percentage in the capital structure. For example, if we have WD percentage of debt issue, then its contribution will be WD times I times 1 minus T. And if we have WP of preferred stock issue, then the contribution will be WP times KP. And finally, if the, we have WC of common equity issue, then the contribution will be WC times KC. Note that WD plus WP 
plus WC has to be equal to 1. And this is the waiter FH cost of capital. And this is also called the marginal cost of capital.